Welcome to Incident Response and Collaboration. I'm happy to have you join me today. Uh, I'm Sarah Holberg, Principal Product Manager for Systems Manager, Incident Manager. And today I'm gonna to provide you with an overview and demo of uh, AWS Systems Manager, Incident Manager. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to give you a little bit of background. Uh, the software development team that built Incident Manager was part of the organization that owned large scale uh, incident response for all of Amazon. And we were on point when the impact was significant and costly, and we built custom tools for Amazon to coordinate response across you know, all the service teams and organizations, which you can imagine uh, is, is not insignificant given our size. Um, we also were on point for automating uh, triage and diagnosis activities for teams, providing deep inspection of uh, incidents, allowing teams to really get to true root cause and then taking those learnings and incorporating them into our operational readiness uh, plans for you know, continuous improvement, ensuring that you know, we either don't have that same issue again or you know, we have a better response next time. So we talk with customers all the time and we'd share our best practices and the things that we were doing, telling them about how you know, effective incident response is really a continuous journey and it requires a combination of preparedness, agility, communication, you know, and, and as I said, learning from past experiences to constantly improve our capabilities. And, and after having that conversation a number of times, we realized that to be customer obsessed, we should really provide a solution that mirrors our best practices to, uh, uh, to our customers. So about 18 months ago, we launched uh, Incident Manager. So Incident Manager is an incident response and collaboration tool uh, designed to help you respond quickly and effectively to performance application security issues, whether they're in the cloud or on-prem. Um, at the core of Incident Manager are response plans, which are templates that include uh, who to involve, so uh, specific contacts, you know, an on-call uh, rotation, escalation plans, um, and, and what actions to take. So for example, like what automated runbooks do you want to instantiate? What runbooks do you want you know, to be included in the incident and presented to the responder to help them walk through diagnosis and triage activities? And then where to collaborate. So when impact is significant and across multiple service teams, you, know, you need to engage you know, where those, those subject matter experts are and so we have integrations with uh, Slack, MS Teams, and Amazon Chime. So these response plans are then wired up to a signal. Uh, today, uh, you can wire up to Amazon CloudWatch alarms or EventBridge rules. And with uh, Amazon EventBridge, you can trigger an incident from basically any AWS service. Uh, so like AWS Config, Security Hub, DevOps Guru, um, any others that you can think of, you can be, they can be wired up. Any type of event or pattern can be wired up through EventBridge. Um, something to note is we also have uh, an integration, uh, EventBridge has an integration with third-party tools like Datadog uh, and New Relic. So that allows you to leverage the power of these response plans really with the observability tools um, that may be outside of AWS. Uh, one thing to note before I get started uh, is that Incident Manager also integrates with uh, other ITSM tools like Jira, ServiceNow, um, PagerDuty. So engineers uh, or responders can stay within the AWS console for um, triage and mitigation activities. And the work that they're doing within uh, the Incident Manager uh, dashboard is is uh, ported over and logged into the primary ITSM tool for their company. So with that, um, we're gonna I'm gonna walk you through you know a scenario and provide a demo of Incident Manager. Uh, we're going to configure uh, contacts and an on-call schedule that roll up into an escalation plan. We're gonna walk through uh, a response plan. Um, and we're gonna then configure an AWS config rule and wire that up through EventBridge as I talked about. And then we'll simulate an incident and we'll walk you through and show you how that response plan is instantiated, what gets, you know, what gets populated in the incident, what starts to happen, and, and walk through the, you know, the triage and diagnosis activities that you would have. And lastly, we'll conduct a post-incident um, analysis. So that uh, uh, inspection mechanism after after a large incident occurs. Um, any questions you have, uh, please ask them in the chat, uh, and I or one of my colleagues uh, will respond. 
So Incident Manager is part of AWS Systems Manager, and you'll find it nested under the Operations Management section of the left nav in the console. Click on that. And when you set up uh, Incident Manager, uh, you'll be prompted to select up to three regions where you want your response plans and contacts to be replicated. So we use DynamoDB global tables to replicate data between the regions. This ensures availability and uptime uh, should a region have degradation. Um, we don't charge for the additional regions. Uh, you know, we really need, you know, if, if for an incident management platform, you really need to have high availability. And so it doesn't make sense for us to charge uh, additional for, uh, uh, for that redundancy. Um, one thing to note is we do support cross account um, using uh, RAM, uh, which is Resource Account Manager. You can create a RAM share um, in one of your accounts and then uh, put your response plans, contacts into those accounts and share them across the regions. So that's how we do that. All right, after setting up your regions and, and Incident Manager, uh, you're then gonna create your contacts. So we don't yet support uh, LDAP for pulling contacts in, but we do have cloud formation templates that you can use for bulk creation. And you can also choose to set them up manually in the UI, which uh, we're gonna kind of walk through here. So um, contacts can have up to three engagement uh, channels. You can have email, SMS, uh, and voice, and you can set those up. And then you also can create rules uh, for each of those channels on when to engage on that channel. So for example, if I have email, I'll say, you know, engage that one first. If I have, um, you know, my, my mobile phone in here, I can say after 10 minutes of not reaching me on, on email, go to my mobile phone and so forth. So once I have all of my uh, contacts set up, then I'll create an on-call schedule. So uh, an on-call schedule defines who's notified when an incident occurs. Um, an on-call schedule can contain you know, one or more rotations, uh, and a rotation specifies when a given contact shift is in effect. So you can conclude up to eight of these in a single on-call schedule. We're gonna look through here, this particular on-call schedule, and you'll see that um, I have configured three rotations within this schedule. I have kind of the beginning of the week. Uh, they're 24 hour schedules, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, both myself and Becky. The shift is gonna be weekly for uh, one week. And then the second rotation will be for the second half of the week. Thursday, Friday, it'll be Warren and Igor, 24 hours, again, a week, uh, one week. And then I'll set up a weekend rotation. So you can set up weekends. You can say it's a 24 hour shift. You can select the folks that you want to have there, right? So we can add and remove. In this case, I wanna have everybody uh, get their fair share of a weekend shift. So we'll do one weekend. So everybody will get one once a month. We'll update that. Now you can preview that on-call schedule. Oops. Uh, you can preview that on-call schedule while you're creating it in the left nav. And it will show the calendar of events and it'll show who's on, on point. So this is also another great way to kind of make sure that you're load balancing. Once you have done all that, um, you have your on-call schedule uh, up and running. You can create an escalation plan. Um, so after you create the on-call schedule, the escalation plan, you know, really allows you to, we'll take a look here uh, at this one, allows you to uh, set up stages. And in this case, we can call an on-call schedule. We can call, uh, uh, we, can, we can configure it to, to uh, engage an individual. So you'll see here I have, uh, you know, the first stage is I'm gonna engage that, that website primary on-call schedule that I just showed you. If someone from that schedule acknowledges it, we're gonna stop the progression and we're not gonna to continue to page and bring more people into the incident. But should they not, after 10 minutes, I'm gonna I'm gonna page Igor and I'm gonna I'm gonna need him to to engage uh, right away. And again, you can have multiple stages to this. I'm gonna assume that Igor is on point and that you know once he acknowledges, you know, the that uh, the incident is is um, is handled. 
Okay, so now we have, uh, you know, we have our contacts and our escalations and plans in place. Uh, we can create a response plan, right? Because we know who we're going to contact. Now I'm going to walk you through a response plan that I have created here, and um, really within a response plan, um, you can you can name the response plan. You can also uh, put in defaults for the incident, so you can have a specific title for the incident that uh, when, when, in, in, when the response plan is uh, in, initiated, that, uh, 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 that name of the incident um, occurs, you can set the impact. You can also put a summary in. We do support markdown, so you can be pulling information from uh, other um, AWS services into the, the summary of the incident. Uh, there's a deduplication string. Um, in this case, I wouldn't need it because this is a um, this is just a compliance issue. Here's where you set up the uh, the chat channel that you want to collaborate on. Um, in this case, it is uh, uh, for me it's Slack, and so I've selected that and the SNS topics that you know I want to um, uh, leverage via that chat channel. And here, I've, uh, for the engagement section, I'm selecting that EC2 compliance team, um, and this is the escalation plan that we just kind of walked through. The other thing you can do with the response plan that I kind of touched on earlier is, uh, is to call uh, automated runbooks. Now, we use um, SSM automation documents as our, uh, as our engine for automation. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select an existing runbook. You can kind of filter by the ones that you need or that you know that you have by yourself, ones that are shared with you, or ones that Amazon has that you want to leverage as part of the incident response. You then set up the, um, uh, the role that has permission to run that, you know, designate that. And... Um, as I said, if you if you if you uh, if you use PagerDuty for all of your um, uh, escalation on call and all that, uh, we do have an integration. You can set that up within the response plan, and all of that will be handled by um, uh, by uh, by uh, PagerDuty. Um, since since we're doing a demo here today, I'm just going to show you what is natively available within the product. Okay, so we've set up our uh, response plan. We now uh, need to wire it up. So uh, for this demo, I'm going to show you um, a scenario where uh, I'm going to have an EC2. Uh, I'm going to have a rule in AWS config that says all of my EC2 instances need to be compliant with my Amazon machine image, like one that I have approved. And so I'm going to I'm going to pop over to AWS config in the console. Okay, and I'm gonna go to rules. And you'll see here I've pre-configured a rule, but let's walk through it. This rule basically, as I said, looks for uh, new EC2 instances that get spun up that uh, are not part of, or, or do not comply with the Amazon machine image uh, that I have, that, that, you know, that is the approved image. So. It's going to look for those particular things. We'll put in our parameters. And then we're going to pop over to EventBridge. And we're going to, again, go into Rules. And you can see, I'll walk you through this. I have a rule set up that is, uh, you know, it says start uh, incident if there is a non-compliant um, AMI, which is Amazon Machine Image, uh, that's spun up. And it's basically looking for this event pattern within uh, AWS config. And the target basically says, hey, if, if this actually triggers and you see it, I want you to create, um, or I want you to use this runbook to create an incident. And, um, and you can see here all of the details. And we can edit this and, and modify. You can do this, as I said, for uh, other things. But in this, in this uh, demo, we're going to use um, uh, the AWS config. So now I have all that wired up. I have the, you know, the config rule that's going to trigger the event bridge rule that's then going to call my response plan that will create an incident. 
And before we got started, I did a, initiate um, an EC2 instance, and I did it without a key pair. So that doesn't comply with the uh, Amazon machine image that, that I have set up. So let's take a look at that image, or sorry, that EC2 instance. And it is running. So that got spun up and it's running. And I know it's running because I have been paged. <laughs> so if I go back to Incident Manager, we're gonna go back to the dashboard. I have an active incident that, I, that, that has been ongoing. So we're clicked into the incident. And the first thing you're gonna see is the, uh, the action or information banner. And this contains uh, key information about the incident. Uh, these are, are things that we input into the response plan uh, in, in many cases. So like the status, the, or sorry, the impact, the chat channel that we are uh, collaborating on, the runbook uh, that we uh, wired up through that response plan. And then there are other things. So we have the, the status and the engagements. So I have been paged into this incident. Um, and so as you, as you go further down into the incident dashboard, there are tabs, you have an overview. And you can see here that um, I've got a lot of details and information around uh, what the incident is, uh, you know, what the incident is, has been triggered up upon. Everything that's happened to date is getting logged into the timeline of events. The runbook has been, uh, is, is here and waiting for me uh, to kind of read and walk through. And under engagements, um, I have been, uh, it looks like it's this, uh, the beginning of the week. So uh, Igor and Becky have been engaged. Igor did not respond. And so Becky was then paged. Um, I can also do things like engage myself here. Like, let's say, uh, you know, one of them um, decided that they, you know, that they needed help from me because there was something specific I needed to do they can page me directly from here. So they can you know, go outside of the response plan to do so. And in a little bit, I'll get a, a code and I'll, I'll log in and, and, and engage. So there are things happening um, uh, all throughout uh, the, the incident here. Um, if this was something related to say like a high CPU issue, we could designate um, or we could, we could pull in different metrics um, via CloudWatch, but in this case, there's no real metrics to be watching other than the fact that a, an, an EC2 instance is spun up or spun down. So we've really got a lot in here. Let me show you. Um, we have the capabilities of adding notes. Oops. Um, and again, we support Markdown here. So let's say that I have I've looked at it, I've shut down that EC2 instance and, and all is well. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to resolve uh, the incident. Um, now this is prompting me uh, because I haven't completed the runbook all the way. Um, I can pull in other runbooks. Uh, if, if I had had multiples, I could, I could pull in multiples to the incident itself, but I'm gonna resolve the incident because uh, I feel like you know, we've, we've resolved the issue. Now that I've res resolved the uh, incident, I'm gonna be prompted uh, as to whether or not I wanna create an analysis or a post-incident analysis. Um, in this case, we're going to create one. We have a standard, standard template that we use that we ship with Incident Manager. Uh, you can also uh, edit this for uh, the purposes of, of your company and things that work for you. So we're gonna create an analysis. And to be clear, like an analysis isn't needed for every single incident. Um, I think if there are, are questions as to, you know, could you have done something better? Are we resolved? Uh, is the incident resolved or just mitigated? Do we understand root cause? Some of those things will dictate whether or not you, you know, you want to do a deeper analysis. So the great thing about a post-incident analysis after the incident is we're pulling over. We're basically slurping all of the information over from an incident and dropping it into this post-incident analysis record. So you have the capabilities to edit and say, you know, a thing happened and, you know, we did something, right? Um, so you have your incident summary, you can talk about the impact, and then you can go into timeline and you can say, okay, well, 
there's probably some of these that I don't necessarily care too much about if I'm pulling together like a, you know, a big report, um, eh, you know, the, the triage activity being paused, like some of these things, parents items, you can actually edit these or you can delete them. So I'm going to delete one and, you know, we'll, we'll delete another one or, or we can edit. And then we can go in and if we'd added metrics before, they would pop up here or we can add metrics ourselves. And then, as I said, um, I don't have any for this one since it's just a compliance thing. I, it's not a high CPU or anything else that I would want to see. So I'm not going to uh, pull those in. And then this is really where we get into, uh, you know, the best practices for Amazon. So we we ask ourselves after any big major incident, you know, what could we have done better? And we've broken that down into sections. So what could we have done better to detect the incident? What have we, could we have done better for diagnosis, mitigation? And then we really get into the five whys for prevention, right? Like, why did this occur? And, you know, really walk down that chain. Oh, because, you know, the car battery wouldn't start or the car wouldn't start. Well, the battery was dead. Well, why was the battery dead? Oh, it was the starter. You know, like those types of things as you um, really get down to the, um, uh, the true root cause. Uh, and then, you know, based on some of the things that you input here, we will recommend actions to take, or you can create actions yourself. Um, in this case, you know, I can say, um, remove access to user or EC2 instance creation, right? Um, and I can put the various things, how big, size, all that, and add that in. And once I've completed all that, I can complete, and it'll show me like if there's anything that I have or haven't done here. And I'll complete the analysis. And then that, as I said, that action item gets logged as an ops item within uh, Ops Manager, which is really where we track non-critical um, or non-critical activities uh, or, or tasks that need to get done um, that are, uh, uh, that we wanna track. Now, not everybody in your organization is going to um, have access to the AWS console. We recognize that. And you might wanna share your analysis out broader, email, those types of things. So we do have a print functionality where we can kind of select like, what are the things that we do wanna show folks? Um, and you know, you can select, uh, let's, let's show the overview, the timeline, the questions we've asked and the, uh, action items. It allows you to print to PDF, uh, for those things, for, for a, a, you know, a report that you can then share out and around. You can select various things depending on the audience as well. You know, my VP might really want to see just high level things, whereas my team might want to see all of the details. And so you can do that here. And at a high level, that's that's really the the uh, the demo that I have for you today. Okay, so some key takeaways for today. Um, really, Incident Manager allows you to prepare for incident response, um, so that your incidents become less reactive. Uh, it has incident uh, uh, response plans provide you the capability to incorporate automated response with automation documents, so those runbooks can be running while your resolvers are getting involved. Um, and allows you uh, the capabilities to learn um, from each incident to improve preparation um, for next time. So with that, uh, I really wanna say thank you and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the presentation.